For example, one, this is uh, one example for the overlap portion. This is a screenshot of Xcode. For example, I, here's um, the editor view. I just put all the buttons in the layout. And then um, there's some automatically some constraint added. And um, actually looks fine. It should be no problem. So there's a constraint between this text view and the buttons. So there should be no overlap between this one. The text view is fixed here. And on this side is fixed to the checkboxes. But um, but not, might not um, obvious for the developer that if I resize this window and make it um, smaller, that it's more um, like this one, that um, there's no constraint between this button and this button. So um, the developer really has to check everything that, um, that stays over that tree. So um, the approach um, we use to um, to fix this problem is um, actually quite simple. Um, we just made uh, all edit operations um, um, designed them in that way that um, they stay overlap free and the, um, that they stay overlap free. For example, if I move this button between this one, then I uh, move this button a little bit to the top and was squeeze it just um, below the item view. But then there's still the problem that if I resize the window, then make it smaller, that this button could move over this uh, item view. And then we just had the simple approach. We just tile into the empty space. We tile some uh, rectangular um, um, areas, and then add, just add a constraints, the missing constraint for those tiles. That would be. In this case, um, we constrain here that this button does not um, leave the layout to the top, and it's constrained here between the item view and the button, that the button just does not move over the item this view. So um, after I created a layout with this editor, then I want to use this layout in my application. And um, so a way to do that would be to create some, first um, save the, um, or first assign a unique string identifier for all the items in the layout, and then store the screw specification uh, within the editor into a B message and store it into a file or potential to an attribute of the file. Then, um, from within my application, I load this um, this um, specification and um, access the views using the Unix strings. For example, um, the stop and solid code, code. I, I just assume that I stored my layout specification in GUI layout in this file on the top. Then I create a <coughs> then initialize a, a layout archive which takes an um, BLM layout. Then I just call restore from attribute, um, gives this method the, the file and the attribute name. And then I'm basically done. Then I already um, initialized the layout. Um, then, but then I still have the, the button with the default names. So I just um, call method find view, the template method. I want to get a B button. And then the, I gave the button the identifier star button. And um, if, the, if this button is in the archive, then I get a pointer to this uh, button. And then I can just give its label, set the, um, set, set the message, and everything. Yeah, that, this way it's quite easy to, to access um, the buttons. And then I still can edit um, the layout of the editor and don't break any code. Because just, um, I just as, as long as I don't modify the, um, the identifier string, then I'm still fine. 
Okay, that was about um, the layout editor. Um, just have one slide about the uh, user interface customization. That was actually um, the reason why I did this editor, because I was working on this layout editing. And then it was just a small step to um, bring this one into an editor, because um, it's basically nothing different if I had, um, create a layout and editing a layout during the design process or just editing an existing layout. Yeah. And there are two parts of layout customization. The first one is layout customization, what I basically showed before. That's about rearranging layout items or um, that I can um, <coughs> remove items that are, which are not needed. Or for example, I can um, add hidden items <coughs> um, which are not part of the initial layout and then add it to the um, interface. But there's also, um, we'll take a look at uh, functional customization. Um, and that's for example needed um, if I add really a new component to the application and then wire it to an existing component, for example, I can I have a, a button with an in, in application hook and um, then I can uh, connect this uh, button to another component and then I click this button then it triggers the other component to, uh, to do something that was not part of the original application. I uh, also have some demonstration of this one. <coughs> um, this is just a um, normal media player. player. And um, I just um, <coughs> implemented the, the I just replaced um, the old layout just with the BLM layout. And so I'm basically done. So what I can do now is, for example, I can swap um, the peak view with this one. Or maybe I can say, um, yeah, actually I don't want to have this peak view. Then I just remove it from the layout. But it's, then it's still here visible in the inactive components view. In this way, for example, I can also don't need a volume slider because I <laughs> yeah, because I, maybe I, I always use this one or for some reason. And then I can move this way and make it more compact. Um, then I this is just a fake button, but what I can do is for example add a record button. The normal interface I don't want to have a record button, but um, in this case I want to make it a recorder. Or for example, here's an, um, a new for, for the, for the um, text. So then I can um, also show um, the title and all the information about the app. If we see, and then I can close this and then I just can continue using it as before. Um, I actually want to do a small um, um, user evaluation or questionnaire or kind of interview um, during the guys and then show some other examples and I like to ask um, um, who is keen to participate is welcome to um, to do that and um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to ask um, um, yeah, the, the goal of the, the evaluation is that um, to find out where you would use um, user interface customization <laughs> and um, what's the use case or what do you think about that and so people some of you would participate later on. I will just come around to Thank you.
doing this. Oh, sorry. Element of time. We're doing this. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, actually, yeah, I can't um, say that because we, for example, we had a lot of discussion about the algorithm, how to implement this over <coughs> stuff. But actually, in the way it's implemented at the moment, it's not um, the styling algorithm, but I did some other stuff. But in the end, we thought that the styling algorithm is the best one, but that's not implemented at the moment. So it's, yeah, I can't really can't say that. Yeah, and, and in the beginning it was um, it was not meant to be an editor, and then um, actually then in the last then make it an editor that was not that much work. Are there any problems that you need to address? Or yeah. see what, so. <laughs> no, no, there are quite a lot. There's the um, that this, um, the saving of this overlap, I, um, I just add additional constraints. For example, I don't store them properly at the moment, so I uh, store the layout of files not working at the moment. Yeah. And then there are some, some other tools like editing the labels of the, of the buttons and everything. And just make it a bit more convenient. And also maybe add a component that's just a placeholder for some other use that you can just um, place it somewhere and then later in the application replace it with your custom use. Something like this. So we got you know you know where the new flexbox stop in CSS? Flexbox and see the new flexbox. Flexbox. Flexbox is new CSS, CSS R sheets. Okay, yes. It looks, it looks like there are similarities. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, you also have your file and you can design it independent from your code. As long, as long as, uh, but it, it does, it has a constraints based. Uh, yes, yeah. Box layout. Yeah, but I have to look into it and it should be It should be very, I love the um, in-touch prototyping. Yeah. That you can do is so if, if you can do something like that and get it to generate the necessary CSS, yeah. that would be. Yeah. yeah, the problem with the constraint base, they are still powerful, but it's also very difficult to, um, sometimes more difficult to specify it. For example, in a grid back layout, it's quite easy, just go column. Well, I can, I can show you the thing that does it using the current specification. Which is because they've been working on it for years. Yeah. So there's nothing on that. Because being I think being able to prototype your interface like that is very useful. Mm. And uh, so the usual stuff is have to do that. So that the interface is not just programmed and then that looks shit. Now I have to program it again to make it slightly better. Yeah. 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 Do you have any plans for the functional customization? Um, yes, um, yeah, I have some prototypes. Um, it's basically, it looks like this Cortex demo, mm -hmm. and then I have components, and then I can wire them together. I have some, um, some demo in the evaluation. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's no, no kind of scripting language or something. No, no. So that you can do more complex. No, I we haven't really looked that much into it yet. So it's very easy. The component framework, uh, the components, and then um, I can just um, have some sockets, and then I can uh, <coughs> plug um, some interfaces into the sockets, and some events methods, calls, and do it. Yeah, I can do it. Thanks. What's up? Next. <laughs> Next? Without without break or anything? <laughs> <laughs>